Hey guys, in this video, we are looking at Video Ninja in the context of a group room. I wanted to see how far I could push things until they broke. Video Ninja, as you might know, is like a peer-to-peer -peer mesh based sort of setup where there's not really any servers. Everyone kind of shares video with each other. And so as you get to larger and larger room sizes, things start to become pretty intense on the network and on the CPU. And so in this video, we are going to look at um, where things broke. So the video you see at the moment is a solo output. Um, so this is coming from Video Ninja. Uh, all the settings are default, 2500 kilobits per second, VP8. Um, the audio on the microphone I increased to 64 kilobits and turned off echo cancellation, noise cancellation. Uh, but everything else is kind of uh, standard. Um, this is what I see on my screen, right? So we have 12 people in this room, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12. Uh, yeah, um, I have two um, tabs open on the same computer. So this particular computer has joined the room twice. So one time more than needed just to stress it even more. I wanted to get 12 or more people in this room. And as a result, the CPU load of the system, you know, I pushed it pretty high. It's also uh, capturing four scenes and it is also recording using the NVIDIA H.264 hardware encoder uh, at 720p. But the CPU is handling around 90 to 95, 100%. So, but as much as I could push it. Um, okay. Now what we see here in the top right is we have five megabits per second upload being used. So 2,500 kilobits per second too for the solo link. Uh, then there's like another 500 or so for one of the scene links that we'll see about in a second. Uh, but in general, when you're, when you're in a room publishing a solo link and publishing a scene, the requirements are about five megabits per second for a default setup. Uh, you probably want to have closer to 10 megabits upload. Uh, but if you are in a uh, group room and maybe you're not sharing a solo scene, uh, the requirements are a little bit less two to three megabits per second, you know, five megabits per second would be a nice comfortable number. Um, but you could have, you know, see everyone talk to everyone and you're only using two to three megabits of upload. So the requirements aren't, aren't that high for upload and the uploads in the, would be about the same requirements as the download on that front. So, you know, two, or two to five megabits per second upload, generally a recommended minimum when you're in a group room of this size. Um, but then I have other videos here. I have these Twitch videos that are coming by and that is being brought in from this computer. So this is uh, twice the speed of the other computer. Um, you know, the other computer we're looking at was an Intel 8 core 999-9900K. Uh, so two generations old Intel. This one is a one generation old it's the last gen uh, AMD 16 core, 3950X, beefy, beefy system. Uh, we're at around 80, 82% CPU load on average. Uh, but this particular computer is pumping out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different guests. So they have this window open seven times. And so they're publishing close to around 80 streams and playing back you know, 20, 20 or so streams, 22 streams, I guess. Uh, no, 80 streams also. Uh, so yeah, they're publishing and receiving like 80 streams and the CPU load is only around 80%. If we do the math, uh, divide 80 by seven, you're, you're really only needing You don't need much, one or two cores, two cores on an AMD system to participate as a guest in a room. 
uh, of this size, you know, maybe three or four if you want something extra. And if you want to publish 1080p as a solo link, uh, you might want to have four to six cores available. Um, but you don't need a, you don't need a lot. So um, considering how this particular computer, the one I'm using right now is an eight core, and we have OBS and two things set up at one time, uh, you don't probably even need an eight core to host a room and to use OBS. And to demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to close one of the tabs. And so this Intel system with eight cores is join the room as a guest. So it's akin to being like a director or just joining the room uh, in this way and recording into OBS with four scenes active. Uh, and our CPU is 60%-ish, under 60%, 55% CPU load. So a six core AMD system or you know, a modern Intel six core system could, could be sufficient for you to create a show, capture it, participate in it, direct it, um, and still have a little bit of headphone, headroom. So, uh, yeah, uh, probably for a 12 room, 12 guest room setup, you probably want a minimum of six cores. Uh, eight cores might be a little bit safer. You want to have that headroom. Uh, but six cores seems to be adequate if you have an NVIDIA graphics card or an ATI or AMD doing the video hardware encoding, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, if you want to do gaming and do a 12 room and do OBS, get a second computer or uh, get like a 12 or 16 core computer. Probably better to get two separate computers if you're going to be doing gaming um, and HDMI one out to the other. But um, yeah, what we're seeing is it's, it's not super steep, the requirements to do a group room of 12 people. Uh, what else do we have here? Well, we have this video on the top here. Um, second from the top left, and that is this MacBook. And so I'll show you that. Hey, MacBook, how are you? Um, so yeah, the MacBook is on, uh, MacBook is a MacBook M1, uh, a pretty cheap computer actually. It's been having no problems at all uh, parenting away so far. Um, so yeah, you, you, you could use a MacBook and join a room with 12 people, maybe even contribute a couple of streams additionally. Uh, it hasn't had any problems. Older MacBooks are a completely different story though. If you feel like a 2016 or even worse, like a 2012, it's a different story. But these new MacBook M1s uh, and newer, they have a lot of heft to them, so uh, shouldn't be a problem. They're equivalent, I'd say, to like an Intel 8-core in terms of CPU capabilities. Um, and the newer ones are going to be even faster. So that was not a bottleneck. Uh, that's also on Wi-Fi, but it's plugged into power. And it's a little bit warm, but it's, it's, not, it's not hot. Um, back to the local system, we also then have these two things in the bottom. One of them is an iPhone, right? Uh, iPhones will look choppy to a guest, but if we open up the scene and we move our hand, it's, it's smooth, right? So an iPhone uh, is optimized for, I've optimized iPhones so that for OBS they look smooth, but guests will see them as, um, you know, much lower quality just because iPhones are a little bit weird that way. They don't have much CPU, but they do have a lot of GPU. Uh, so I use the hardware encoder. There's three of them to feed out to OBS and the director. And I really limit the CPU so they don't, I don't stress it out. And as a result, the guests um, are, are stuck using the CPU, which is really limited. Uh, I did not optimize Androids as much as I have iPhones. Um, 
just because Androids are so fractured, it's hard for me to really optimize uh, for them all at the same time. Uh, so I have a Pixel phone here. And you'll see that it takes quite a bit more time for the video to show up. You know, even in the scene link, it it's delayed. And so the Android is actually where this started to break. At around 11 or 12 guests in the room, uh, video started becoming very delayed. Uh, it started to drop out for certain guests, drop out, drop in. Sometimes it didn't load back at all, or sometimes it would take five minutes for it to load back. Uh, this is an Android, uh, this particular model is a Pixel 4a. So it's a budget phone, like $300. Uh, it's not powerful. It's not, not, not a flagship one, but a lot of Androids are, for, are older or slower. So that actually was the weakest component in this setup. And it broke first. And so I'd say uh, when you're dealing with Android users, you want to limit it between 4 and 10 guests in a room. If you have a flagship one, like a Galaxy a G, Galaxy S21 or something, you could probably get away with 12 or more guests, 12, 13 guests, who knows, but you know, like a Pixel 3, Pixel 4a, something like that, it, 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 it breaks. Um, but that's not to say, that's not to say that you can't have a group room of 12 people with a pixel phone you have options okay so one option is we add room bit rate zero to all the guests who can't keep up what that does is it has their video uh, disabled for other guests so only obs will see their video and all the other guests will just see a blank spot that allows uh, an android to really just focus its CPU on providing a good quality video for the for OBS. And the guests will only have to, the other guests in the room will have to listen to that person instead. Um, you know, it's not, not, not a great idea. Uh, it's not a great option necessarily if you want to see that particular guest. But when it comes to production, Sometimes you got to sacrifice a bit. So room bit equals zero. Add that to the URL of that problematic guest and it will then let you carry on with the show. Uh, another option is you can have the director enable broadcast mode. You hide broadcast to all the links, right? And now everyone only sees the director. And the director then takes their OBS output, turns on the virtual camera, and then shares that video to everyone in the group. That expects, you know, if you have like an AMD 16 core, no problem, you know, the, that host computer is enough power that they can then share video to everyone in the room. Everyone in the room can now see everyone else through that virtual cam output. Um, a, little bit, a little bit of delay maybe, but big deal. Um, that's a great option. You can have maybe a room size of 20 people if you do that. The only thing the guests are sharing is audio with other guests. And so you can get maybe a group size of 20. Uh, what happens if you want to go bigger than 20? Or maybe you don't have a powerful computer. Maybe you only have a quad core. Well, then you can try something like MeshCast. Uh, it's a free service. I host MeshCast.io. And you can then go into broadcast mode. But instead of sharing a virtual camera, you share the MeshCast output as a link to the room. And it shows up as like an iframe as an embedded website in the group chat. And so now you're sharing your video with only MeshCast and the server that is MeshCast now shares video with everyone in the group. That saves CPU and it saves network upload. It lets you as a director now uh, support maybe a room size of 30 people because you don't, you're not limited by your computer anymore. And let's say you wanna to go to a group size of 40 40. Okay, how do you do that? Well, uh, my recommendation would be you do something like use Google Meets, have everyone talk on Google Meets, and you have everyone uh, be given a, uh, a basic push link. So everyone talks within Google Meets, but then they also open up a, sep a secondary tab 
where they share their video with a video ninja and you bring that into OBS. So you're not using video ninja anymore for chatting. You're just using it to pull in a high definition isolated solo link. And that way you can use Google Meet to power the, the meeting because the cost of hosting a 40 person meeting is very high actually. And so you can offload that cost and load to the Google, those Google servers and that Google service. Um, it will work, it's gonna be stable. And you can just focus on pulling in these solo links into Video Ninja. High quality video, no problems, stable. It will work on all devices um, except for mobile. Um, mainly because mobile devices won't be able to do two things at a time. Uh, so, the, you know, there's, there's, a, there's one limitation to that, and that is mobile devices won't be able to participate in that sort of setup, but you can always have them join with two devices. Um, you know, maybe one to talk and then one to just record. You have some options there. I do say Google Meet instead of Zoom or Skype, uh, because with Google Meet, because it's a browser-based app, you can share your camera with both Video Ninja and Google Meet at the same time and not have any conflicts. If you try to share your webcam or camera with Zoom or Skype at the same time as Chrome or Video Ninja, there would be an error saying the camera is ready in use. So using Google Meet or any web-based conferencing app uh, will let you use Video Ninja as well, sharing that camera. Um, so that's a way that you can get to group sizes of let's say 40 or more. Um, if you wanna go beyond you know, 40, 50, group sizes, you're going to start needing to adopt um, like performer management tools, having multiple group rooms or uh, some sort of management system. Those are being in uh, queuing systems. Those are coming out more and more uh, for Video Ninja. Um, I'm developing some that will let you handle hundreds of people uh, that way, but um, th those are yet to come. Uh, I guess one last final thing I wanted to mention is that if you're using scenes, uh, Video Ninja scenes in OBS, scenes do take up a lot of CPU power from a guest, um, and even for the director, right? It, each scene you add to OBS is a new browser tab with a lot of activity happening. So if you're doing a lot of custom scenes, um, that's kind of like adding an, an additional guest or two to a room. It's, it's more load for everyone in the room and it's more load for the OBS system. So uh, be careful with scenes. They can inflate uh, the load quite a bit. I'm doing optimizations to improve that and you'll see that in version 19 and version 20 of Video Ninja more and more. Um, but for now, and even then, uh, just be careful. Scenes can and will increase the load the more you add. Not OBS scenes, but Video Ninja scenes. The more you add, the more load there, there will be. So um, just keep that in mind. Okay, well, I hope that helps. Uh, that kind of covers the different approaches you can take with using Video Ninja and to achieve larger rooms. But, uh, you know, room sizes of 4 to 10 without any optimizations, uh, just leaving the defaults should work in most cases. It's really when you start to break past uh, 10 and up, 12 and up, that things start to become really iffy. Uh, and in that case, I start to recommend optimizations, you, you know, broadcast mode, mesh cast, things like that. Um, okay. Thank you very much, guys. And I hope that was helpful. Bye.